In this tutorial, you'll learn how to design interactive features using InDesign. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have a projects folder for the project that you're going to be working on. And in my case, I have a projects folder on my desktop, which I called my last name and the word DataViz for data visualization. And in my projects folder, I have an images folder and a sound folder. And I went ahead and put the content that I'm going to be using in this tutorial in those folders. It's a good idea to have all your materials in one folder so you don't have any linking issues when you go to export. I'll create a new document in InDesign. So I'm just going to click on document here. If you don't get this window, you can also go to file new document to create a brand new document. I want to change this to web because I'm building a web page essentially and I'm going to change my screen size to 1024 by 768. There's all these different screen sizes for different types of devices, but this is one of the most popular for the web. I'll also make sure this is landscape. I'm going to go ahead and change my columns to four. Why I'm changing this is because even though I'm designing for the web, you still have columns, you still have a grid on the web, just like you do in print. And then I'll hit OK. So here's my document. It's untitled. I want to make sure that I give this document a name. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it in my Projects folder. Again, I want to keep all my materials in one folder together. The next thing you want to check before you get started is that this button up here says Interactive, this drop-down menu. And here's the tools to do animation. I'm going to go ahead and draw a simple box on my page, just using the Shape tool here, this rectangle. And I'm going to come in here to my Fill Color on my toolbar, and I'm going to give it some obnoxious colors so you can see what I'm doing. Now all I want to do is have this box do something on the page. So because I have this interactive drop-down menu highlighted, I'm going to click on this Animation tab here. And I'm going to click on it while I have this object selected. I want to give this a name, so I'm just going to call it Box. And the preset says, what do you want to do with this box? Do you want it to fly in from the bottom, fade in, appear, grow, grow large? What do you want to do exactly? And these are all action scripts. So if we were doing this in Flash, we would be writing all of this code. But InDesign has written the code for us. Now they're very simple actions. There's not a lot to them, so you can't do something very, very complex like you can do in Flash. But for beginners who are just learning interactive design, this is a great start. So I'm going to click on Dance. It gives a little preview of what it's going to look like. Event is when do you want this to happen? Do you want it to happen when someone just opens your HTML page and you want this to dance? Or do you want to happen, have it happen when someone clicks on the page? Do you want to have it happen when someone clicks on the actual box itself? Or when someone rolls over the box? So you can choose all these different events here. So I'm going to choose on rollover. One of the things you notice is that it kept on page load. This is kind of a, a weakness in InDesign, I think. And you have to go back and turn this off so that only one of them shows. You can also do reverse on roll off, meaning when someone rolls off the image, the dance will go the other way. You can change the duration, how long you want it to be. Do you want it to be a little bit slower? Uh, do you want it to be a little bit faster, etc. You can loop it so it just keeps playing and playing, and this is kind of an annoying feature, so you may want to lay off that one. And how many times do you want to do it? Let's do it two times. You can also have it ease in so it slowly eases in and slowly eases out. This little feature here is your preview, so if you want to see how this works, you can't really see it play on this flat canvas, right? You have to open it up and actually look at the Swift file. So this is a preview, and if your window is really small, you can grab the edge, the corner here, and make it bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Nothing's happening, but when I roll over, there's my box. Let's try one more action. Say I just want my box to move to the right. I'm going to change my preset to move to right. I'm also going to change the number of times to one. And the other thing I want to do is this time when someone clicks on the box, I want the box to move to the right. 
So let's see how this looks. I hit my preview play button, click on the box, it moves to the right. I'm going to close out of this preview window and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit by doing command minus and I want to show you how you can actually adjust the motion path of this box. So if I click on this box it shows me this green line here and I can actually adjust this green line by clicking on it holding my shift key down and dragging this in here. Now I'm going to create a button and to do that I'm just going to create a shape so I'm going to create another rectangle shape and I'm going to go ahead and give it a color so I'm going to click here on my fill box and give it another obnoxious color so that you can see what I'm doing. So what a button does is when you click on it or when a user clicks on it it plays the animation. So I'm going to use my type tool here and I'm going to type the word play. And when you use typography in interactive graphics, you want to make sure you're using web-safe typefaces. I'm going to use Verdana. It's one of my favorite fonts to use for the web. And I'm going to increase the size a little bit. I'm going to put this word in my button. So let me zoom out. Here's my animation. And you can tell because it has these little bubbles on the corner of it, so you know that there's some action on it. And here's my button, which right now there's nothing happening. I need to make it a button. The first thing you want to do is group your objects. And you can go to Object Group. It's also Command G. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this by drawing an imaginary box over it. And I'm going to hit Control Click. And it gives me options. So it's, it's equivalent to a right click on a PC and then I'm going to choose interactive convert to button interactive convert to button and then this button panel pops up I'm going to give this a name, I'm going to call it my play button and I want to say on click so when a user clicks on this button and let me add an action I want an animation to play what do you want to play? Well, I only have one animation. If I had a lot of animations on my page, I would have to choose which one I wanted to play. What do you want it to do? I want it to play. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like in our preview pane. I'm going to click on our preview pane, click on the play, and there you go. Say I want to create an animation that has its own motion path. Well, to do that, you first want to create your animation. So I'm going to create a bumblebee and I'll go ahead and make it yellow. Let me give it a head. I want this bumblebee not to move right or to move left, but to kind of do a fun little path. And to do that, I'm going to use my pencil tool. And I'm going to draw kind of this little bumblebee path. All I did was use my pencil tool to draw that object. One of the first things you want to do is I'm going to group my bee, so object group. I also want to make sure that my bumblebee is moved to the front, arranged to the front, so object, arrange, bring to front. That's important for this animation to work. Now I can select both of these objects, the path and the bumblebee, control click, go to interactive, convert to motion path. I can go to my animations tab here. I'm going to go ahead and change the duration to be a little bit longer, so I'll say 8 seconds. I'll also want to give it a name, so I don't want to leave the default name of group. I'm going to also change the event so that when someone rolls over the B, it happens. Now look, it did that same thing again where it did on page load. I'm going to take that off. And now I'll do my preview spread. I roll over my B, and I can see it move. Say you want to do an interactive that requires a hotspot. A hotspot is when you want to shade a specific part of your image for something to happen. So let me give you an example. If I go to File, Place, I'm going to bring in a photograph that I have of a musician. Now my Images folder is in my Projects folder, so I'm not pulling images from my computer or from the web, which you really never want to do. I'm just going to pull it from my Images folder and I'm going to go ahead and place it. Now notice how my image is bigger 
than two columns, but smaller than three columns, and I really want to stay on my grid. So I'm going to hold Shift Option Command and drag the corner here. And now I can make it the right size. Crop it a little bit. So with this demo, I want when someone rolls over Usher, his body, I want a song to play. Now I'm fair using this song for educational purposes, and I'm only using a few seconds of it. So I really do not recommend you use music that's copyrighted. You want to make sure you're using royalty-free music whenever you're using sound in projects, right? It cannot be copyrighted. And if it is copyrighted, you always have to go to the original source to get permission to use it. The same is true for images that you use. You want to make sure that you give proper credit to the image when you're using it. This one's an associated press image, which we have a subscription to at our university. So now I want to hear Usher sing when someone rolls over his picture. To do that, I need to bring in the sound file. So I have the sound file in my folder, and I'm going to place the sound off the page. So you never really need to see this element, but it's going to play when someone rolls over Usher. So I want to create what's called a hotspot. So I'm going to click on my square, and I'm going to come over here and draw a square around Usher. Now this is a transparent square, you can't even see it really, which is a good thing. I want to convert this to a button, so I'm going to control click, which is the right click on a PC, convert to button. I'm going to give this a name, say Usher Music Button, and I want when someone rolls over Usher, I want a sound to play. And the sound that I want to play is this MP3. Now MP3s is what InDesign likes, and I want it to play. So let's see what happens. Here's my picture. Now notice it kept playing even when I moved my mouse off of it. So I really want it when someone goes off the image, I want it to stop playing. So to do that, I'm going to add another action. On roll off, I'm going to hit the plus button. I want you on the sound to stop playing Usher. Let's hit the preview pane. There you go. So that's how you create a hotspot on a particular part of your page. So now I'm ready to export this project. You want to get rid of the animations that you're not going to use, the ones that are not used on your page. Why? Because your file is actually bigger when you keep things that you're not using. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these things. And I'll leave my audio file because I am still using that. I'm going to go to File, Export. And I want to make sure that this drop-down says Flash Player Swift. Okay, It may default to something like this, but go ahead and change it to Swift. And it already has my naming convention, so I'll leave that. You want to make sure that it generates an HTML file. That's important. I can turn off this view Swift after exporting, unless you want to see a preview of it. And everything else is fine, and default's fine. Hit OK. And what you'll see happen in your folder, you'll see all these files created. So this is your HTML file, this is your Swift, and then you have your original native InDesign file. To create a PDF for an editor, let's say, you want to go to File, Export, make sure this says Adobe PDF, and also make sure it saves in your project folder with the right naming convention. And the other thing you want to make sure is that Visible Guides and Grids is selected. Then hit Export. What this will do is create a PDF in your project folder that you can then print from, and it will also print your grid as well. In this tutorial you learned how to build interactive graphics using InDesign CS5. If you really like doing this I highly suggest you learn JavaScript and programming. But this is a great start for beginners.